Hi, and welcome to Get Me Plugged In. October is Emotional Wellness Month, and today we're featuring some resources to help you boost your emotional and mental well-being from the Kidney Wellness Hub. Joining us on this episode is Megan Gorosh, a somatic healer and creator of Elan Wellness. And Megan will discuss the important role that our matrix of support plays in supporting our mental well-being. And Megan also introduces the heart tamping technique, which is a great stress buster. And psychologist Dr. Erin Moon joins us to talk about some of the red flags to look out for that may help to identify mental health challenges. And she suggests various types of resources available to both kidney patients and people in general who may be dealing with mental health challenges. And get ready to roll out your yoga mat because living kidney donor and kidney wellness hub yoga instructor Brenda Brown is here to demonstrate mindful breathing exercises. So stay with us because all of these great resources from the Kidney Wellness Hub are coming up next right here on Kidney Plugged In. Hi everyone, welcome to the Kidney Wellness Hub. My name is Megan Gorosh and today I'm here to talk to you about something called the Matrix of Support. So I'm curious, when you think about support or what supports you have in your life, what comes to mind? I find quite often the answer to that is people, and that's great. Lots of us have people that are really good supports. They might be friends, family members, could be your partner, but what if I told you that your supports and your resources could expand well beyond the people in your life? A resource can be anything that supports you. So that could be non-human. It could be your pets. If you have a cat or a dog or other, it could be nature getting out into the woods, or even just hearing the birds sing. It could be an abstract idea like love or compassion. It could even be something that isn't real, like a, a fantasy or a memory. It could be a character in a book, a resource that supports you is anything that you can think of or anything that is close to you, you could hold in your hands, that brings you a sense of ease, maybe even a sense that you're safe where you are. You know, when you hold, like maybe you have a special rock or, or something that when you hold it in your hands, you know, you get a sense of goodness. Just take a moment to notice how your body might be physically reacting. And when I say that, what I mean is notice any physical sensations. Is there a sense of warmth when you reflect fondly on that memory? Or is there kind of a sense of, of containment of really uh, inhabiting your body? when you hold that smooth beach stone? Do you feel spacious and light when you are with the people that love you and support you? So these resources are things that you can draw upon anytime. Whenever you need a sense of support, whenever you just need something to fill your cup, so you're welcome to reflect on these resources anytime you need a little of that. With the matrix of support, you can imagine it as a vast glistening spider's web with you at the center. And so at the points immediately surrounding you, maybe those are your people, maybe your family, whether by birth or chosen, Maybe they're your friends. It could be your spouse, your partner, and 
beyond that, maybe there's other people. Just take a moment to think about who might be there close to you in the center of that web. And are you somebody that enjoys nature? Whether that's walking trails in the woods, feeling branches brush against you, maybe it's sitting by the ocean, the smell of the ocean, the sound of the waves, maybe hearing birds sing gives you a sense of joy or a vast night sky with the stars glistening. I invite you to really let your imagination run with this and see how crisply you could picture these images or any other images that come to mind. And so as you've had this experience of going through just some things that you might add to your matrix of support to this vast, vast glistening web with you at the center. Does it feel like maybe this is something you could draw upon in those moments where you might feel alone? Did you know your lifestyle choices can significantly impact your kidney health? Staying hydrated, eating a balanced diet that's low in salt, maintaining a healthy weight, and moving regularly can all help protect your kidneys. Small changes in daily habits can make a big difference in keeping your kidneys functioning well. Check out the Kidney Foundation's Kidney Wellness Hub. It's a free online platform with tons of great tools, interactive resources, and videos, all to help you stay active, eat well, and boost your mental well-being. Plus, opportunities to get connected and stay social. Don't miss our cooking classes, our new Walking to Wellness series, and our wellness coaching to support you to make those positive lifestyle changes and stick to them, and so much more. Join today and receive a free journal. And now you know. In today's show, we're gonna be speaking with registered psychologist, Dr. Aaron Moon, about kidney disease and mental health. And we're gonna explore the relationship between the two. We're gonna talk about the prevalence, just how common are mental health challenges with kidney patients. We're gonna look at some of those red flags, some of those warning signs. We're gonna talk about coping mechanisms and strategies, and when to consider seeking professional help and treatment. So we've got a jam-packed show. Don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back with Dr. Moon. Nice to meet you, Dr. Moon. Thank you so much for taking the time to be on plugged in today. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Can you talk about some of the red flags for mental health issues with kidney patients? So I think it's important to recognize that you know, low mood or depression um, or, a, you know, a significant anxiety concern is different from just a, a normal reaction to a, a stress in life. So um, the reaction would tend to go on, you know, for quite a period of time, so longer certainly than a couple of weeks. So if someone is feeling low and sad or um, very anxious, most of the day more days of the week than not and that goes on for a period of time you know when we're into sort of many weeks or months um, then that's an indication that that people could really benefit from additional support but the other thing to look out for too is just the impact on the person's day-to-day -day life so if uh, the struggle with mood or anxiety is getting in the way of getting to work or getting to school, um, you know, doing normal activities that the person enjoys. If they're not able to do those things in the same way, um, then I would say that that's a red flag as well for some extra support. Can you talk about some common healthy lifestyle tips for people who are facing mental health challenges. It's important to think about sort of going back to the basics. So things like healthy eating, prioritizing 
enough time for sleep. Um, getting exercise is a really critical piece, and there's research that's growing to show us that exercise in and of itself can be really helpful for things like mood and anxiety. Also getting outside. Um, for adults, it's really important to avoid uh, drugs and alcohol, which might in the short term give some relief from things like low mood, but in the long term typically make it more complicated. Um, managing stress, reducing stress whenever possible, calling in your support system, seeing if there are some things in the course of your week that you could you know, give up for a period of time, doing things like yoga or meditation, whatever you do in your life to manage stress, anything that gives you relaxation. It can also be really helpful to connect with other people. So um, making sure that you reach out to your friends, your family, your support system. Um, and so that might just be, you know, informal, going for a coffee. Um, it can also be more formal, like getting um, support from other people in the kidney community. Um, through the Kidney Foundation, the different supports that are available. So all of those things can really go a long way to helping people manage stress, which then um, can have a positive impact on their mental health. When those common coping mechanisms aren't working, at what point should someone consider seeking professional help? If those um, struggles like a low mood or anxiety go on for um, quite a period of time and it is getting in the way of day-to-day -day life, then it is time to think about asking for help and support. Um, so for adults, a really important person to start with would be your family doctor. Um, also your kidney care clinic team. Um, so, you know, those are all really good sources of information and resource and those uh, members of your team can certainly direct you to other resources that exist um, in your area. Some people can access counseling through their employee assistance program, so that can be something really helpful for adults to look into. Um, and then when it comes to crisis services, it's also really important to know that those exist 24-7. So, um, you know, in your local area, there, there will be crisis services and crisis lines um, that can click in if someone really needs in the moment support. Hi everyone, welcome to the Kidney Wellness Hub. My name is Megan Gorosh and today I'd like to introduce you to a practice called heart tapping. So heart tapping is a method of bilateral stimulation and this is something, a practice uh, or exercises that have you cross the midline of your body. So midline here and then moving from side to side. So one of the cool things about bilateral stimulation is that it helps to increase the connection uh, and information processing between the left and right sides of your brain. So as the ability to um, have those two halves communicate increases, so does your ability to uh, process information, sensory, um, everything that's coming in and this also helps to settle your nervous system. So I invite you to have a comfy seat and just take a moment to kind of settle into that support. And when you feel ready, we'll explore heart tapping. So you'll take your right hand and find, there's like a little divot just under your left collarbone. So you can find that and just gently let your fingers rest there. Left hand is gonna find that same spot underneath your right collarbone. And just let your hands kind of rest there comfortably. And whenever you feel ready, you can just start to tap gently those spots. Now, the pace at which I'm tapping might be a little slow for you. It might be a little fast. So you can tap at whatever rate feels good and comfortable for you. And as you're tapping, you may wish to notice your breath and see how it feels to gently lengthen and deepen your breath, just to what's comfortable. And as you're slowing your breath down, finding maybe a little bit of a deeper inhale and a longer exhale.
and know that this heart tapping is something you can do as little or as much of as you like. And while you could certainly do this anywhere, it might not feel the most comfortable to do it if you're maybe sitting at a, a meeting or you're in a restaurant and you know starting to feel a little activated in your nervous system. So another option is to do this tapping but on your thighs. So your right hand would go to your left thigh, your left hand would go to your right thigh, and again, just tapping. And as you tap, whether it's on your chest or your thighs, notice the sensation of your hands on your body. So the feeling on your, your hands, your fingertips, and maybe even how your body, like your chest or your thighs, experience your hands. As you do this, you might notice that your body takes a deeper breath or a sigh like mine just did. Maybe you start to feel a little warmer. Maybe your eyes start to water. And these are all signs that your body is moving into more of a relaxed state. So there you go. There's your heart tapping. You can do this anytime you like. I hope it works well for you. Thank you so much for joining me. I look forward to seeing you again on the Wellness Hub very soon. So Dr. Moon, can you talk a little bit about some of the treatment options for patients with kidney disease who also have mental health challenges? Treatment for things like depression and anxiety in people with complex health conditions really look about the same as they do for the general population within um, a, a framework and a context of the medical condition. And so, um, you know, when we're thinking of something like uh, depression, for example, when the symptoms are in sort of the, the mild to medium range of severity, really what we look at is therapy as an option first. And so cognitive behavioral therapy is um, one of the most evidence-based interventions um, for both adults and for children with things like low mood or depression. Of course, it looks a bit different with adults and with kids, and with kids it's much more play-based and free-flowing. Um, but really that type of work is all about the connection between thinking, feeling, and behaving, and how that all goes together to impact mood. Um, when you move more into the sort of medium range to severe range of symptoms, um, at that point it's, it's a consideration whether there might be an additional medication that could be helpful. Um, and usually it's a combined approach of medication and therapy together is um, what the evidence shows us has the best impact. And so, um, you know, it's quite common for me to um, ask my psychiatry colleagues here at Children's Hospital to consult with a family to see whether or not um, a medication might be appropriate. Um, and um, some family doctors and pediatricians are also um, experts when it comes to those types of medication options. So there's a lot of, of consultation and interdisciplinary work. Um, when symptoms are, are you know, really troublesome to a, a child's or an adult's day-to-day -day life. Um, and um, oftentimes that combined approach of therapy plus medication um, is, is the package we need to put together to get them some relief. Are there any recommended resources out there for kidney patients who are facing mental health challenges? There are a couple of key websites that I can recommend. There's so much on the internet these days and some of it is good and some of it is not as good. So there are a couple of, of key um, places that people can go that can then sort of be a hub for connection with other resources. So. Um, for adults, uh, the Anxiety Canada website is a really great source of information. And actually, both for adults and for children, they have resources that are, um, you know, really across the age span. So if there are concerns about anxiety,
anxiety, certainly Anxiety Canada is a great source of information. Um, the Canadian Mental Health Association website is another really great source of information and there's some really great programs that are offered um, through the Canadian Mental Health Association. Things that are quite unique like telephone coaching um, and online services. Um, so, so certainly the Canadian Mental Health Association is a good source of information. Um, and then the other one specifically for children and youth is the Kelty Mental Health website. And the Kelty Mental Health Resource Center is housed here at Children's Hospital. They have an amazing website. They also archive things like expert presentations, webcasts, things like that. And so that's another really great source of information around really mental health broadly in young people. Hello and welcome to Kidney Wellness Hub. I'm so glad you could join us today. My name is Brenda Brown and today's class is going to be on breathing or pranayama. It is designed for beginning breathing lessons or breathing classes. Pranayama is extremely important in learning um, how to breathe in and for yoga or in and for life um, and for calming our mind or centering our mind um, for any activity, especially when it comes to meditation, um, calming for anxiety, stress, um, and, we, and we take our breath for granted um, in so many activities because we breathe all the time. We, if we weren't breathing, we wouldn't be alive. Um, but pranayama simply means in Sanskrit um, life force or to um, life force. And so um, with that, we're going to focus on one of the beginning uh, breaths or uh, learning breaths uh, for this session today and it is called even breath and it is really a good practice to start beginning in it, it will help us work with the uh, parasympathetic, parasympathetic nervous system if I can learn how to pronounce that word it would help me immensely um, in beginning to um, teach this uh, portion but um, breathing in and out of our nostrils or in and out of our nose um, helps calm and center um, uh, the parasympathetic nervous system and so we're going to do that initially but we'll start by inhaling and exhaling the stale air initially out of um, our bodies so we'll do that um, to start so we'll first of all inhale and exhale all the stale air and we inhale all the way down into our diaphragm or right into our belly or the Buddha belly making it big and long and push it out and then exhale all the way. So we're going to do that and count to four and then we're going to like I said hold it to four and sometimes it can be really challenging for some people that aren't used to breathing and holding their breath to four. So if you find it challenging to begin, do it maybe to three, 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 three. Um, but start and try with four. So inhale to four, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, exhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, inhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, exhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four. Now to count to yourself. Anytime you get lost in your monkey brain, you come back to that two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, hold. It's a really simple, easy count and breath that you can come back to. And it's just like I said, a box. Some place to hold your breath and bring your breath in your mind will be held there very simply to be able to count within at any time of day, any place, anywhere. It's an easy breath and an easy um, breathing technique to use. And, and like I said, a very um, simple beginner's technique that we can, we can work on together and it will eventually become part of your meditation practice, part of your yoga practice, and part of your, um, 
your healthy practice to begin to grow in your lungs and your diaphragm and will make your all your organs healthier over time. So I hope you enjoyed today's um, breathing class and learning about pranayama in this first lesson on even breath. Thanks again for joining us today. I look forward to seeing you back here at the Kidney Wellness Hub soon. Namaste. Revitalize your energy and unlock your potential. This is your opportunity to nurture your body, focus your mind, and build habits that last. It's all about empowering yourself to live a balanced and fulfilled life while maintaining your overall health and well-being. Whether you're currently living with kidney disease or don't even know where your kidneys are, you'll leave inspired to continue your wellness journey with confidence. For October, we're featuring these three live sessions. Discover exercise snacks, a fun and easy way to add movement into your day. Learn about these personalized plans that have gradual progressions and you have the support of kinesiology students to help guide you. No matter where you're starting from, whether you're building new habits or regaining your mobility, let exercise snacks empower you to feel stronger and more energized every day. Next up, if you're struggling to find the energy to cook, we've got the class for you. Come Cook With Us features eating well when you don't have the energy to cook. This session, designed for those days when even thinking about getting off the couch feels like a challenge, you'll learn simple, easy recipes that can be pulled together even on a busy weeknight, perfect for those who want to eat well without the hassle. And finally, unlock new ways to express yourself in Art for Wellness. As a form of self-expression, these sessions can help us better understand ourselves. Art is about expression, not perfection. You don't need any special supplies or prior experience to join, just an open heart and a willingness to explore your creativity. Everyone is welcome to join these sessions and explore the Kidney Wellness Hub to recharge your mind, body, and soul with practical tips, on-demand videos, interactive sessions, inspirational talks, and more. Let us help you step into a healthier, happier version of yourself. Visit kidneywellnesshub.ca and join the wellness community today.